first thing I always do is draw the image out and you can easily do that using transfer paper which is like a graphite by paper so print off the photograph on a cheap print setting get it all drawn out I tend to do the edge first especially when I'm working on the background so I use blue masking fluid as you can see here uh, which is the one I tend to prefer because I can see where I put it on the paper well the full version of this one is on my Patreon channel so pop along and have a look at that one other than that there's lots of other videos, tips and tricks ready and waiting just for you let it dry, then once it's nice and dry, well it's actually quite tacky to dry then you can start putting your colours on for the background now for the background colours I tend to wet it and mop, use a mop brush first so wet it numerous times before going with the paint so you can see the paper starting to cockle a little bit um, drop in your colours step by step just mingle them in, doesn't really matter this is going to be like a mottled background effect and then once you've got your colours in there light this off and take any residual water off there then leave it to dry for a few hours once it's dry you can then start peeling off the masking fluid now I do that from the outside in that way if it does tear the paper it's going to tear towards in this case the otter and not into the background you can cover any tears up otherwise once I've done that then I'll transfer the drawing back onto the paper now working on the eye this is a mixture of black and a little bit of brown and I put the eye colour in first then on the nose again just a wash of colour on the nose and then the same black and brown colour um, once the nose is dry just kind of pick out the details within the nose start to get some shape in there as you can see back to the eye some all over the place here working on the eye and then defining some of the shapes around the eye and within the eye as well now whilst that's drying I go back to the nose and start tapping the nose with the very tip of the brush we're working back on the eye again, I know I'm back and forward on this one needs to be. I put a little bit of cerulean blue in there and uh, just kind of hinted with the cerulean blue a little bit more blacky brown and then a touch of opaque white to kind of bring out the colour and the shine within the eye as well. That kind of creates the life which we need within the eye. Once I've done that, then I go back into the nose again using watercolour white. Now this is just using a tapping motion all the time. Don't do it entirely all over the nose because the problem if you do that as well is that it can make it look too flat so what you want to do do it mostly on the top of the nose more than the bottom a little bit of burnt umber and uh, lamp black on there as well for the eye and also a little bit of blue in there looking at what I did there I'm trying to think what I did in that part and working around the top wetting around the top of the eye I like to kind of work out the shapes of the eyes as a start um, because by doing so um, then you've got something to kind of have the eye socket to kind of or the eye to sit in the socket should I say then I'm going to define where things go by outlining things along the paper and then softening down the pencil lines with my putty rubber. Okay, so what I tend to always do as well is use my double zero brush and just outline some of the pencil marks with a little bit of paint. That ensures that when you go back in to do the painting, um, the lines or your, your reference marks tend to stay put. I'm going to pop in the second eye, it's only just kind of visible just on the side of the face there and that's using that dark colour again. Uh, working on that. You can barely see it, but we need to make sure it's there, otherwise it will look a little bit off balance, won't it? So working on that, and then just kind of defining where that goes, doing a bit of colour testing as well, working out, there's a bit of a pink hue as well that we've got there. Um, on the top of the head, I want to wet things down first, use probably a size 6 brush. And the reason why I do that is because I like to kind of make sure it's nice and wet before I start going in with the colour. As you notice, I only wet part of the head because otherwise you tend to get areas which are drying too quick, etc. So do one section at a time. Dropping in the foundation colour first, uh, which is like a bluey blacky colour, and I carry on all the way down. There's my pinky colour made up, so that's going to go underneath the chin. Um, so this again is just a foundation wash, just so we've got something to work on top of when we start to go in with the detail work. So looking around the back of the head, I'm going to continue wetting this all the way down. Now once you've done all this, as I said, tend to do it in sections, then you can come in once it's nice and dry and start putting on the detail. Now I'm using my little uh, homemade split brush here, it's a bit like a, a, like a rake brush. And all it is, it's an old brush I'm about to throw in the bin, I squeeze the, the metal ferrule with a pair of pliers, just kind of open it like a fan shape. So literally it was going to go in the bin, so it's not a problem. And that's created like a, I can do three or four lines in one go. This is really handy when you're doing the kind of the first one or two layers. I wouldn't do it for the top layer, I'd just do it for the first one or two layers because it gets a little bit too uniform otherwise. So soften that down with some clean water, not too wet, just uh, nice, and, nice and soft. 
Then once that's dry, you can then go back over the top with some more detail. So I'm going to continue all the way down now, the back of the neck and all the way along the chest, um, working over the foundation wash which I've just put underneath the, uh, the otter, and making sure that all the directions of the fur or the lines are going to be in the right way when I compare that to the photograph. So you've got to keep looking at your reference photograph, that's so, so important all the time, it really is. So I'm looking at all the details down there, and very carefully working around the eye now. Now I'm going back into the double zero brush, here we go. So this is the next layer of detail on the top here. Again, being very careful on the direction of the lines. You can see I brought the photograph in so I can see and show you what I'm looking at all the time. You must keep looking backward and forward, backward and forward, backward and forward, like a record I know, at the photograph, it's so important. Look at the detail, look at the length of the lines, look at the direction. You've got to keep doing that. So again, working along with the colour which we've got, which is that bluey blacky colour. I think got a little bit of brown in there as well, um, working on the colours there. And just very carefully pointing the details for the top of the head. Working around the nose, underneath the nose, we need the nose to sit on something now. So these lines around the kind of cheek area, above the cheek, is going to be very tiny, they're very small lines, and also directional as well. So again, you're looking at the direction that those lines go in. Again, so, so very important. Um, so continue working all the detail work on there, as you can see, just very carefully, um, kind of working out where things go. The working behind the ear as well, you can see what I've done with the back of the head, I've kind of made it a little bit darker. Now, I tend to turn the page around a little bit, the, paper, the painting around, and the reason why I do that, because you've got like a natural curve to your hand, haven't you, when you're using a brush? So, when I turn the paper around, I can actually get the curves and the directions a little bit easier that way. Soften it down again with a damp, clean brush. You can see the detail coming together now. And that damp, clean brush really does kind of make it set off. Don't wet it too much though. Okay, so just don't make it too wet. Now working underneath the chin, there's a little bit of lizard crimson in there as well, just to kind of get that reddish hue to that area. Don't worry about the white areas just yet, we'll be adding those in as we go along. That again, is something which really makes it pop at the end. So underneath the chin, you can see the difference in colour now. Um, just like a pinky chin these little otters have got on there, they're amazing little things. Um, so working out where the fine lines go, and kind of pulling the lines out from the otter into the background. So not starting from the background into the otter, because you end up with like a little dot to begin with. So again, back to my kind of crushed little brush, and working out, picking out some of the first layer of details around the cheek area. I know this is still light around the cheek, but for us to put the white over the top, we need to make sure that we've got the detail underneath first. You can't have light without dark, you can't have dark without light, I know. But so you need something as a foundation wash or foundation colour for the light to go over the top of, so it stands out. All right, so that's why I put all that on there. So again, working on the detail underneath the chin as well, you might have to add a little bit of kind of uh, raw CN underneath there, just kind of have an extra colour under there. What you're going to do is work along the chest here as well. So you can see the, the details getting finer. I'm picking out some of the texture and some of the contours around the front of the chest as well. Working out where all the shapes go, looking at the photograph again, step by step I know. And then soften it down once I've got that on. So right, okay, so that's that little bit done. Now I'm going to work around all the fine areas around the cheek. Again, looking at the direction of the lines, looking at where the um, the as I say, the tiny little marks which you've got, and how light and how long the lines are going to be. Once you've got those in, then you can start thinking about getting some more detail over the top. So it's all about kind of building the detail up in layers, step by step. So from light to dark, layer by layer, washing down or lightly softening in between. Don't wash it too far away. And then picking out the details with the double zero brush again. Keep looking at your photograph, keep making sure that you've got the direction right. Again, so important. And uh, add a little bit more kind of burn somber in there as well. Change the hue, the flavour of the colour a little bit as you go along. Well, that sounds technical, doesn't it? But you know what I mean. So just add a little bit of brown in there every now and then, a little bit of red, just kind of change the feel of the colour. So it's not all too samey all the way through. That to me is so, so important on there as well. So working my way down and coming down the, uh, the front of the neck now. You can see as well, it's not quite as dark, is it, on the, as the back of the neck. So with this, once again, I'm working with one section at a time. So I've done one area, 
like soften it down, then start working on another area underneath. So working to underneath the chin, now the chin area is going to be quite dark underneath there, but again we need to get that them layers of detail on there to begin with. Now these layers will act like a like a depth towards the fur when you look at it when it's a completed painting. Some of these layers still show through as you go through. So you need those layers on there, which is why go layer on top of layer on top of layer. Light the softening down, as I say, in between. Now you can see I've got that damp clean, like a size five or size six brush, and just light the softening the paint down all the way through. Then once that's softened down, then we'll let it dry and then we can come back in and get some more detail over the top. So add a little bit more lamp black to my mix, just so I can get those darker colours. I tend not to use black on its own though, because if you use it on its own, it tends to be a bit on the bland side. So, um, so make sure you add a little bit of colour to that black. If you're doing something like the Otto, it's a bit of blue or a bit, a bit of brown as well, all the way through. Right, so what I want to work on, a little bit more colour underneath the chin, a bit of yellow ochre in there, just kind of add that colour. Remember I said about adding colour in places, just kind of change the values or the hues whatever technical jargon you want to use to the colours. I know, I don't like to be technical. Now here we go, watercolour white. This is where it really kind of pops out. I always start around the eye. I like to kind of get that area finished first. I don't know why, it kind of comes to life a little bit more. Then start picking out the details with the watercolour white. Now, you have to use it fairly creamy for the, if you want it really bright, you've got to add just a little bit of white, uh, kind of water to it. Too much water, it goes very thin. So I would use a thin version of watercolour white when you don't need it as bright on the paper, okay? So add a little bit more water to it. So picking out all the little highlight details like underneath the nose and around the nose and especially if you remember we said about the cheek, we need that dark on the cheek to begin with. So picking out the light area on the cheek as you can see. Now all the way around, yeah I'm trying to increase the detail around there but I'm trying not to cover up all that detail underneath at the same time. So remember where it's whiter, make it thicker, okay? So you should be able to just paint a, a line without it breaking. So that's kind of thing, it's like a creamy consistency. So when we look at different consistencies, we've got water consistency, we've got um, milky, we've got creamy, and we've got thick. <laughs> so you've got different versions of it. So it depends on which way you want to describe it. You can see the face is, more, is much more white on the face than it is further down the body. So when I work underneath the chin, I'm going to put the finer hairs underneath there now, like the chin hairs. You can barely see those against the background colour. But that doesn't matter, we know they are there. And they will still stand out a little bit. There's a kind of extra little details. Now working my way down the side of the face as well, the side of the neck. Now you'll also find that you might need to kind of lighten or water it down a little bit more. So it's not too bright around the neck area. And if it is, Remember what we did before one of the other tutorials is that you can very lightly, very lightly, with one fell swoop touch, just put a little bit of a U or colour over the top. But as I said before, watercolour white, you only put the, the colour over the top, just one swipe and that's it. If you try and do it more than once, it could disturb it, it could go all muddy. So working around the chest and looking at the curves and the shapes, which I'm putting in with the watercolour white there as you can see. So I'm kind of shaping it, curving it as I go along, looking at the photograph, looking at where the dark areas are. Now we know it's dark underneath that chin, so I don't add much under there, but I have watered the watercolour white down underneath the chin. Right, so now I'm going to start on the whiskers. This is the final finishing touches, apart from when you sign it, of course. So the whisker area is going to be just one fell swoop. Practice first on some scrap paper before you do this. That again is important, because you don't want to make a mess of the whiskers, I know. So um, get the consistency of the paint to a creamy consistency so you can paint a straight line as said earlier on in one go. So there you go, and that's how to paint an otter in watercolour, step by step, in speed painting. Now if you want to paint this all the way through in real time, step by step, on my Patreon channel which is uh, www.patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. Uh, you'll find this painting all the way through, so come and join me, have a go at that one, and that's about four hours of real-time video tuition. Remember to like, share, and if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now. Hi there. Well, thank you for watching one of my little videos. And if you want to see anything else, I've got more on here as well. But also, if you have a look at my Patreon channel just there, look. Okay, that's the one. Yeah, got it? 
Um, I'm showing people how to paint step by step and using watercolour. So this is using um, all the finest of details for wildlife in general. So if you want to learn how to paint wildlife in watercolour, then come along and join me on Patreon. So thank you for coming along and uh, above all, get painting. Bye bye for now.